Hi, everybody. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video. Well, I don't know how quick it will be, but uh, it is a video about analyzing EKG strips. And we're going to talk about the five step process and how to use uh, calipers and etc. So let's dive right into it. First of all, let's take a look at the EKG components. All right, so let me turn on my pointer. All right, so we have a P wave, and we all know that that is the uh, depolarization of the, um, the atria. Then we have a PR interval. That's this segment of time that from the start of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. The PR segment is the time after the P wave when it, the line gets back to baseline, and then it extends to the time where the downward deflection for the uh, QRS complex, um, downward at least this, this view. Of course, the QRS complex is the downward that up the large spike, the largest component of the ECG, and then going back down, and then the S is coming back up. So this is also called the J point when the QRS complex returns back to baseline. All right, so ST segment is from the end of the S to the start of the T wave. Then we have the ST interval. Again, same starting point as the ST segment all the way into the end of the T wave. Uh, the other one we have is the QT interval and that is, of course, where the Q wave starts all the way into to the end of the T wave. So those are your components. And I believe I mentioned this in passing, but the QRS interval is from the time it, it starts downward to the back, the time it goes back to baseline. So your Q, the R, and the S uh, segments all together or components. Okay, there's five step process. We're going to take a look at the uh, process first and then take a look at um, how that interprets into a rhythm step strip. All right, so observe the R waves. So let's take a look. This, we're not counting anything, we're just looking. And they look fairly even, right? So next you will take a look and use either a caliper or your uh, index card and you'll mark the difference between or the time intervals between each one to see if they are regular or not. Regular means that they are uh, a 0 0.12 second or, or less variation. So that's three small boxes. If they differ for greater than three small boxes, is then called an irregular rhythm, okay? So um, if it is one box, two boxes, or three boxes of the small boxes, then it's okay. All right. Step two, we are going to calculate the heart rhythm. So we take a look at those R waves and see what we can find out about them. Are they uh, regular or not. So for regular rhythms, you can do a very quick and easy one. You just count the number of R waves on your six second strip and then multiply by 10, right? And that will get how many beats per minute. Or for a more accurate count, you count the number of small boxes, the small boxes between the R waves and use a conversion chart. So if you have a conversion chart, you will look something like this, right? And you can use that if you have 20, for example, 20 small boxes, that's a, a rhythm rate of 75 beats per minute. Okay. Or you can count the number of small boxes, the small squares and divide by 1500. There are 1500 squares per minute. So that is your regular way to count your rhythm if it is a regular, regular rhythm, right? Now, 
if it is an irregular rhythm, we are going to be using a different one. Count the number of R waves in a six second strip and multiply by 10. Okay. Or you can count the number of R waves in a three second and multiply by 20. You'll get the same result. Uh, there are other ways to do that, but that's the, the easiest way to get your overall rhythm. Now, some places will have you look at your overall rhythm. It might be, say, a normal sinus rhythm, and then you have a, a few PVCs thrown in. So you count the normal rhythm and see how fast that, that is, and then, um, then you can sort of disregard those. So you'd say it was a normal sinus rhythm with PVCs. Here's another way to uh, calculate the rhythm. So if you have a regular rhythm here between the R's, you can take a look and say, if there was one large box, which is one, five small boxes, your rhythm would be 300. So if you had an R wave every, every five boxes, that would be a rhythm rate of 300. If you have a QRS complex every two boxes, it'd be 150. Every three boxes would be 100 and et cetera, down to, to 50 in the rhythm out here. Okay, so that's another quick way you can eyeball the rhythm. Okay. Step three, you're going to identify and examine the P waves. So we've already taken a look. You have these nice rhythmic R waves. Okay, that was in step one. Now what we're going to do is take a look. It, before each of the QRS, is there a P wave? There's a P wave here, P wave here, P wave here. Yes, 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 and yes. So we have P waves. So that's, we'll check that off on our list here. Are they the same size? Okay, they all look the same size. You can count how many squares they are to be sure. Are they the same shape or do they have a different morphology? If a few of them look different, that means they were excited from a different area than the others. So the shape of them is important. Uh, position. Uh, is the PR interval the same or is it a, a different area? So if it is different, that will clue you into uh, certain pathologies that the patient will have. All right. Measuring the PR interval. All right, so the PR interval, right? So that starts with your start of your P wave, and it goes all the way over to the, the first deflection off a of baseline, okay, after the P wave. So that's the start of your Q wave in your QRS complex. So you take the number of small squares and you multiply by 0 0.04, which is the length of one square. So if it is two boxes, that would be a 0 0.04 second, which would be a normal time frame. Step five, measure the QRS complex. So we know that if the QRS complex is wider than normal, there is a pathology there. So you want to take a look at that. So you take a look from the first downward deflection, right? So you start your caliper here and you measure all the way up to the J point, which is where the QRS complex returns to baseline. So here you would measure from this little area over to that area and see how far it is. So normally you would want a 0 0.08 to a 0 0.10 seconds. So that would be two to two and a half small boxes would be a normal time frame that you would want there. Okay. And again, anything abnormal from that, anything different is a indication of pathology that we'll get into later in um, uh, the other lectures that we have for the program. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We have one large box, two, three, and four. So you can say there's four large boxes between the R waves. 
Okay, so if we go back up, four boxes, that's 75. So we have a 75 beats through minute. Let's go back over here. Or you could have counted, there are 20 small boxes between the R waves. If you use that conversion chart that we showed you earlier, it also comes with 75. So 75 beats per minute, which puts us well in the range of a normal sinus rhythm. And since this is a simulated wave, you know, everything is perfect. This is what you would love to see. The P wave is nice domed, it's not peaked. It's not higher on one side or the, or the other, indicating pathology. Uh, the, the PR segment is regular. ST segment, QRS segment. So there's one, two, there's two boxes between between here. So that's a normal QRS as well. All right. So I'm going to look at, here is where we got the pictures for this. And I'm going to switch over to the other camera here. I'm just going to pause this. Okay, so hopefully you can see this strip here. We have it from a uh, the book that I referenced earlier, the um, EK, ECG workout exercises in arrhythmia interpretation. So first you take your, you have a pair of calipers, or you can get a, a piece of paper and mark down the rhythm strips and then move it per paper. So I'm gonna use the calipers. So I'm gonna put the caliper here. And I'm gonna move that to this next segment. Okay. Now I can flip it on over and bam, that marks exactly where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna walk it over to the next one. So I'm spinning the top part here. Uh, this is less than half a box off from the other one. So we know that it's still okay because it is less than 0 0.12. So this is still a regular rhythm. And we're getting outside the picture here, but that one as well. We'll adjust it. And that is right on the money. Okay. So we have a regular rhythm for our ventricular activation. Okay. So now we take a look at our uh, P waves. Well, let's take a look at our rhythm here. So we have one full box. This is almost a full box. So I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, and five. So there are five large boxes. So this is a rhythm of 60. Okay, so this is a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, so that's a good start. I say we have a regular rhythm, rhythm of 60. Now we are going to look at our P waves. So do each QRS segment have, or complex, have a P wave? So here's one here, 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 here and here, and the other two in this also have, have the, the P wave. Do they look the same size and shape? Yes, they do. All right, PR interval. So remember the PR interval is the start of the P wave to the downward deflection of the QRS. Downward if, if you have the QRS pointing superiorly. Sometimes they'll, of course, do inferior, so the deflection would be different. So I'm going to close our calipers here. Start with that P wave. There. Okay, so I'm going to go up here and one, two, three and a half. So three and a half would be our 
So that'd be 4, 8, 12. So that'd be 14. So, um, okay, 0 0.14 seconds. QRS complex. So we are going to go from the deflection here to the deflection there. Okay, and you adjust that. And we'll look. Two and a half. Okay, it's hard to see on the there, but um, when you look, and you count the, the small squares within the large boxes, you count two and a half. So that's 0 0.10 seconds, which is the upper limit of normal. Okay. And that's how you do it. That is, uh, that's the interpretation. So this would be a normal sinus rhythm at 60 beats per minute with a um, PR interval of 0 0.14 seconds and a QRS of 0 0.10 seconds. All right. Well, I hope that clarifies how to use these uh, calipers and take a look at how to do this. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, day, what time, whatever time it is. All right. So that's it. Hopefully that uh, helps you with the interpretation of your ECG rhythm strips. All right, take care.